Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for joining this morning. We'll make a start on uh, Shimabhaptam Sangha and uh, Japa later on. So let's continue. And we are talking about Vritrasur, the divine demon. And now there's a battle going on between uh, Vritrasur and Indra. And Vitrasu was last time we were speaking that he was saying, please use the thunderbolt because I know that I will have a better deal than you will. You will get what you want. I will get what I want. But I know I am better off because I'm not after anything material. So let's continue. Oh, my Lord, source of all opportunities, I don't desire to enjoy in the Lok the heavenly planets, or the planet where Lord Brahma resides. Nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I don't desire to be master of the powers of mystic yoga. Nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. So, with the Suri, you know, he's, he's ready ready to go back home. He was nearly ready before, just made a mistake. And uh, he's, he's been a king. You know, he was King Chitraketu. And then then uh, he was uh, he was king uh, at that other heavenly planet. And uh, he's, he's seen it. You know, he's, he's been there. He knows it's good for a while. But then, you know, there's really no rasa. In the runs out of rasa, you know, these material things that run out of rasa. All lotus eyed lord, as baby birds that have not yet developed their wings, always look for their mother to return and feed them. As small calves tied up with ropes await anxiously the time of milking, when they will be allowed to drink the milk of their mothers, or as a morous wife whose husband is away from home, always longs for him to return and satisfy her in all respects. I always yearn for the opportunity to render direct service unto you. Oh, my Lord, my Master, I am wondering throughout this material world as a result of my fruity activities. Therefore, I simply seek friendship in the association of your pious and enlightened devotees. My attachment to my body, wife, children, and home is continuing by the spell of you external energy, but I wish to be attached to them no longer. Let my mind, my consciousness, my everything, I have to be attached only to you. Let's pray. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukram Kruti Vachalam Pangum Langyatagrim Yat Kirpata Mandeshi Guru Dharma Paramananda Madhav Shikhtaneshwaram Aryam Tassat Narayam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Saswati Vyasam Tato Jemuduriyat Establish Optimation Nitam Bhagavad Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhakti Nestiki. So now Shukadev Goswami is explaining what's, uh, what's going on here. Desiring to give up his body, Vrita Sur considered death. In the battle preferable to victory. O King Prikshit, he vigorously took up, took up his trident and with great force attacked Lord Indra, the king of heaven, just as Kaitaba had forcefully attacked the Supreme Person of God when the universe was inundated. So although with the sword repeatedly encouraged Indra to kill him with a thunderbolt. King Indra was morous at having to kill such a great devotee and was hesitant to throw it. This is what the delay is. King Indra was, uh, was morous at having to kill such a great devotee and with the suit disappointed that King Indra was reluctant despite his encouragement, took the initiative very forcefully by throwing the strident at Indra. With the suit was not at all interested in victory. He was interested in being killed so that he could immediately return home. Back to Godhead, as confirmed by Gita, Taktava Dehan Puna Janma Neti Mam Etiso Arjuna. After giving up his body 
A devotee immediately returns to Lord Krishna and never returns to accept another body. And this was Bhuttasur's interest. So he was he was uh, taking revenge for his brother Twista, but at the same time he wants to die. So he just wants to give Indra a good hiding, you know. He just wants to prove a point, but really he doesn't want to kill him or beat him. He just wants to go back home. <clears throat> then Ritasu, the great hero of the demons, world is trident, which had points like the flames of the blazing fire at the end of the millennium. With great force and anger, he threw it at Indra. Roaring and exclaiming loudly, O sinful one, thus shall I kill you. Flying in the sky, with the Sus trident resembled a brilliant meteor, although the blazing weapon was difficult to look upon. King Indra, unafraid, cut it to pieces with his thunderbolt. Simultaneously, he cut off one of with the Sus arms with his thunderbolt, which was as thick as the body of Vasuki, Vasuki, the king of the serpents. Although one of his arms was severed from his body, Vrittasur angrily approached King Indra and struck him on the jaw with an iron mace. He also struck the elephant that carried Indra. Thus Indra dropped the thunderbolt from his hand. The denizens of various planets like the demigods, demons, charans, siddhas praised Vittasur's deed. But when they observed that Indra was in great danger, they lamented alas, alas. So, yeah, so Vittasur is really just, you know, giving a bit of pain to Indra, just scaring a little bit. Having dropped the thunderbolt from his hand in the presence of his enemy, Indra was practically defeated and was very much ashamed. He dared not pick up his weapon again with the Sur, however, encouraged him, saying, Take up your thunderbolt and kill your enemy. This is not the time to lament your fate. So Vitasur continued, O oh, Indra, no one is guaranteed of being always victorious, but the original enjoyer, the Supreme Personality Godhead, Bhagwan. So he is the only enjoyer. And he's the only one who's always victorious. He's the cause of creation, maintenance, and inhalation. And he knows everything. Being dependent and being obliged to accept material bodies, belligerent subordinates are sometimes victorious and sometimes defeated. So it's explained that the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, Sarvasya Chaam Hirdi Sanavishto Mathasmriti Gyanam Apahonam Cha. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. When two parties fight, the fighting actually goes on under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, the Super Soul. Elsewhere in Gita, it says, Prakarthe Kriya Manani Gunhi. Karmani Sarvashah, Hankara Vimudatma, Kartha Iti Maniyate. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself the doer of activities that are actually carried out by nature. So we're doing the movements, the actions, but uh, the actual what's going on is in the hands of God. The living entities work under the direction of the Supreme Lord. The Lord gives the orders to the material nature and she arranges facilities for the living entities. The living entities are not independent, although they foolishly think themselves the, the karta or the doers. This is the thing that we are, we are doing things, but we don't get necessarily get the results that we want, the ultimate result in Krishna's hands. So we cannot, there's no guarantees. But we still have to try because if we don't, Go through the endeavor, then you're not going to get any results anyway. Victory is always with the Supreme Personality Godhead. As for the subordinate living entities, they fight under the arraignment of the Supreme Personality Godhead. Victory or defeat <clears throat> is not actually theirs. It is an arrangement by the Lord through the agency of material nature. Pride in victory or morousness in defeat is useless. 
one should fully depend on the Supreme Person of Godhead, who is responsible for the victory and defeat of all living entities. So it's, it's pointless, you know, us getting angry or sad or happy if we win. Obviously, there's happiness, you know, we go through the emotions, but there's no need to overdo it because end of the day, it's Krishna who decides. <coughs> The Lord advises, Niyatam Kuru Karma, Tvam Karma, Jayohi Akarmanaha. Perform your prescribed duty, for action is better than inaction. So you have to go through the action, through the motion. The living entity is ordered to act according to his position. Victory or defeat depends on the Supreme Lord. That's the only thing. But you must do the action. Karmani you have a right to perform your prescribed duty. That's a right. We can't take action. But you are not entitled to the fruits of the actions. But the fruits of the actions are in Krishna's hands and we should not even try to enjoy the fruits of that action. One must act sincerely according to his position. Victory or defeat depends on the Lord. <coughs> So we can't, just because we're doing something, we can't automatically assume that, you know, we will get this result, the fruit will be ours. It is not for us to decide whether we get fruit or not. Vithasur engaged, encouraged Indra, saying, don't be morous because of my victory. There is no need to stop fighting. Okay, so you lost this, this now. You have some defeat, but don't give up. Instead, you should go on with your duty. When Krishna desires, you will certainly be victorious. This verse is very instructive for sincere workers in the Krishna consciousness movement. So it's a lesson for us. We should we should not be jubilant in victory or morous in defeat. We should make a sincere effort to implement the will of Krishna. Oh, oh Sri Jatanya Mahaprabhu. And we should not be concerned with victory and defeat. So we should not be jubilant in victory or morris in defeat. We should make a sincere effort to implement the will of Krishna. Oh Sri Jatanya Mahaprabhu. And we should not be concerned with victory and defeat. Our only duty is to work sincerely so that our activities may be recognized by Krishna. So we are we're not working for defeat or victory, we are working to satisfy Krishna. And then Krishna, let Krishna decide which way he wants us to go. If he, if he, give us, if he gives us victory, then we'll be encouraged to do more. If he gives us defeat, then we know that uh, that is the right thing. In this instance, that is the right thing for us. So it's fine. Because Krishna can do no wrong. He only thinks of our best interest. So all living beings in all the planets of this universe, including the presiding deities of all the planets, are fully under the control of the Lord. They work like birds caught in a net who cannot move independently. We have no independent, very little free will. Otherwise, we have no independence at all. Because... After all, we're controlled by the three modes of nature. So whatever we do is decided by the three modes or whichever mode is dominant in us. So end of the day, you know, is well, we're not doing anything. The modes are, and the modes are, you know, Krishna's energy. <clears throat> the dif difference between the suras and the suras is that the suras knowing that Nothing can happen without the desire of the Supreme Person of Godhead. Whereas the Asuras cannot understand the Supreme Will of the Lord. In this part, with the Sura is actually the Sura. Whereas Indra is the Asura. So Asura, Asura, Asura is not necessarily based on bodily appearance. It's the mentality which is the Sura, Asura. Right? So you could look like a Demigod, still be Asura, because if you're thinking like Asura, then you're Asura. 
No one can act independently. Rather, everyone acts in the interaction of the Supreme Spirit. Got it. Therefore, victory and defeat come according to the results of one's karma. And the judgment is given by the Supreme Lord. Karmana Deva Netrena. Since we act under the control of the Supreme according to our karma, no one is independent. From Brahma, that's the insignificant act. Whether we are defeated or victorious, the Supreme Lord is always victorious because everyone acts under his directions. So our sensory prowess, mental power, bodily strength, living force, immortality and mortality are all subject to the superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not knowing this, foolish people think the dull material body to be the cause of their activities. So, you know, whatever we get is, is controlled and also given by the Lord according to our karma. How much body strength we have and uh, how much mental power we have, right? how much wealth we have is all controlled. O King Indra, as a wooden doll that looks like a woman or as an animal made of grass and leaves cannot move or dance independently, but depends fully on the person who handles it. All of us dance according to the desire of the Supreme Controller, the personality of Godhead. No one is independent. So Vittasur is, you know, is, is well tuned and he knows exactly what he wants and he, uh, he understands the Lord completely and he understands his relationship completely. Whereas Indra, you know, he has his own concoctions. <clears throat> this is confirmed in Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Akele Ishwar Krishna ar sab vritya yar yache nachai sa techa kar nritya. Lord Krishna alone is the supreme controller and all others are his servants. They dance as he makes them do so. We are all servants of Krishna. We have no independence. Independence, we are dancing according to the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, you know, Shri Prabhupada said, he said to the Lord, he said, look, I'm your puppet. Please now make me dance. You know, make me do what you want me to do. Make me dance the way you wanted me to dance. Now I'm here. Uh, I, I surrender to you. Make me dance the way you want. And so that was uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita. In uh, Brahma Samhita, Sloka 1, it's mentioned, Ishvara Brahma Krishna Sachit Anand Vigraha. Anadi Radhe Govinda Sarva Karan Karanam. So Krishna is the cause of all causes. Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the supreme controller. He has an eternal, blissful spiritual body. He is the origin of all. He has no other origin. He does not, like, there's no other source that Krishna comes from. He is the origin of everything. For he is the prime cause of all the causes. He himself is the cause of, of himself and is the cause of everyone else. And then it's mentioned, the three Purushas, Karana Daksha Vishnu, Garbo Daksha Vishnu, and Shiro Daksha Vishnu. The material nature, the total material energy, the false ego, the five material elements, the material senses, the mind, the intelligence, and consciousness cannot create the material manifestation without the direction of the Supreme Personality Godhead. <coughs> so all the all the Purushas, they are expansions of the Lord. He is the original. These are all expansions. And he is the one who's given the energy to these forms and, and the intelligence to do. Even Lord Brahma, given the intelligence by the Lord to do, to, to create the universes, to create the material world, everything, even material nature is given intelligence by the Lord. Everything emanates from him. A foolish, senseless person cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although always, always dependent, he falsely thinks himself the Supreme, 
If one thinks according to one's previous fruitive actions, one's material body is created by the father and mother, and the same body is inhalated by another agent, as another animal is devoured by a tiger. This is not proper understanding. The Supreme Person of Godhead Himself creates and devours the living beings through the other living beings. So everything is done by the arrangements of the Lord. It's not just necessarily that our parents give us a body. Everything parents just go through, you know, do what they need to do, but everything is done by material nature through the agency or by the Lord through the agency of material nature. Just as a person not inclined to die must nonetheless give up his longevity, opulence, fame, and everything else at the time of death. Everything snatched away. You know, when person, whether they want to die or not, they want to hold on to everything. At the time of death, everything is snatched away. This is why it's so painful when, when a person who is so much attached, the more attached a person is, the more pain they feel because everything is taken away from them. A person who not give five pounds to somebody, you know, everybody, everything is snatched away. It's a big shock, isn't it? It has to leave everything here. It can't take anything. No. So just as a person not declared, do I must nonetheless give his longevity, opulence, fame, and everything else at the time of death. So at the point in time of victory, one can gain all these when the Supreme Lord awards them by His mercy. So just like we, you know, we have to give up everything, and then everything can also come by its own accord as well. Things come by their own accord, and then can, they can also by go go by their own accord. We can get a lot of respect for no reason, and then we can get insult for no reason. We can't understand. I, I, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Why was these insults coming? Sometimes people are praising you for no reason. You think, I really don't deserve all this praise. But anyway, we enjoy the praise, but we don't enjoy the answer. It is not good to be falsely puffed up, saying that by one's own effort, one has become opulent, learned, beautiful, and so on. All such good fortune is achieved through the mercy of the Lord. From another point of view, no one wants to die, and no one wants to be or ugly. Therefore, why does a living entity against his will receive such unwanted troubles? That's the question, right? So, it's mentioned again, it's not good to be falsely puffed up, saying that by one's own effort, one has become opulent. When I was my, I, I did this, I became very learned, beautiful, and so on. Yeah, so that's not really our own, or at least not only our own effort. All such good fortune is achieved through the mercy of the Lord. So unless the Lord wants you to have it, He sanctions it, you will not have it. There's these three doers. There's us, the desirers. There's a material nature that takes the action, and the Lord sanctions that action. So, from another point of view, no one wants to die and no one wants to be poor or ugly. But then if we have, well, then we have control, then why can't we control these things? Therefore, why does a living entity against his will receive such unwanted troubles? That's the question. It is due to the mercy or chastisement of the Supreme Person of God that one gains or loses everything material. No one is independent. Everyone is dependent on the mercy or chastisement of the Supreme Lord. There is a common saying in Bengal that the Lord has ten hands. This means that he has control everywhere. In the eight directions and up and down, if he wants to take everything away from us with his ten hands, we cannot protect anything with our two hands. Similarly, if he wants to bestow benedictions upon us with his ten hands, imagine that. That is exciting, right? The Lord is giving it with his ten hands. And we only have two hands to receive. So there's so much to receive in two hands when the mercy is coming with ten hands. We cannot actually receive them all with our two hands. In other words, the benedictions exceed our ambitions. 
So the Lord can give a lot more than we can even imagine or, you know, take. The conclusion is that even though we don't wish to be separated from our possessions, sometimes the Lord possibly takes them from us. And sometimes he showers his benedictions upon us that we are unable to receive them all. Therefore, either in opulence or in distress, we are not independent. Everything is dependent on the sweet will of the Supreme Person. This is so wonderful. And it just, you know, it, it put things into perspective. That if we, we thought like this, then uh, we would never be, we would, we would never get upset because we know that things are coming and going through the control of the Lord. And I have done recordings.